Welcome to the Django Project, DJ Blogger. This tutorial is part of a YouTube Django Project playlist, which you can access in the video description. You can watch the whole course from the very beginning. If you enjoyed this course and would like all the updated tutorials and associated code samples and more, you can check out this course and other courses this project features at Udemy. The link to the course is in the video description. Having now built the framework for our application, we're now ready to start to think about source control or version control. Source control or version control is a common practice of tracking and managing changes to our code. Before we start this tutorial, I will make the assumption that you have already installed GitHub Home and you have already created a GitHub account. So we are essentially working with two softwares here or two technologies, first Git and then GitHub. So Git, as you can see here, is a free and open source distributed version control system. This is going to provide us all the tools for us to be able to track the changes that we've made in our application and perform a lot of other interesting actions. And this is going to become a lot clearer once we start to actually deploy our application and start to think about different versions of our code. So behind the scenes, we have Git, which is a technology which will allow us to create versions and control different versions and track the changes in our application. And then we have GitHub, which is essentially a, a technology which behind the scenes uses Git, but GitHub primarily will allow us to host and store our application somewhere on the internet. From there, we can share our application, for example. Others can download it, for example, and collaborate with our application. And it offers a whole host of other great tools which we might introduce throughout this course. So I am making the assumption that you have already gone through the quick start guide of setting up GitHub on your operating system, but eventually you will get to this screen here. Now you may have gone past this, don't worry. So what we first need to do, this is a GitHub desktop that we're looking at here, the initial screen. If you haven't already created a repository, you won't see this screen, you'll see the other screen, which we'll see in a minute. But essentially what we need to do here is open up GitHub desktop and create a new repository. So here on the Mac, it might look slightly different to Windows, but essentially we want to go to file and you can't see that up at the top in the ribbon file and we're looking for new repository. So whether you're on Mac or Windows, you're looking for create a new repository. It should be fairly generic in terms of the window that we're looking at now. So what we need to do is just give our repository. So a repository being a folder where we're going to store our code. So let's give this a, a name, Django project. Uh, DJ blogger and I'm going to call mine local because I already have a repository named that. So all we need to do there is a name, give it a name and you can see that the path that it's going to use. So that's where we're going to store our repository. So at this point, there are some other options here, but we can ignore them for now. We don't need to worry about that. Just create a new repository. GitHub desktop provides us all the tools to help us manage our repository. Now, over time, you might find that you will migrate over to using commands in the command prompt. So everything you can do in the command prompt in terms of managing your repository, you can do here in the GitHub desktop tool. All right, so you can see at the top left here, we have our current repository. So we have just created one repository. So just make sure you've selected the right repository. We have this branch idea. So a branch being essentially a version of our application. And that's going to make more sense once we start making more branches. And then you can see down here, we've got a few options, publish repository. So we can publish our repository, which essentially means store all of our code onto GitHub. You can see that we can open up our repository directly in Visual Studio Code. And we can also show all the files in our finder. If you're on Windows, obviously that's going to open up in your Explorer window. So if we click on show in Finder or Explorer, you can see that there are two uh, as a file and a folder here. So that's just to manage all of the changes and history of our application. So these files here, these Git files here, we shouldn't touch them and delete them. We should just keep them there. That's for managing our actual repository. And so what we need to do here then is move all of our files from our project folder that we've created so far and put it into our new repository. So what we want to do is avoid placing the virtual environment 
inside of our repository. And I'll show you how to um, avoid that shortly, but let's not place that in there originally. So all we need to do is drop our original project that we created and put it into our source control. And now, as soon as we do that, if we go back to our GitHub desktop, you can see that Git has watching for any changes in that folder. And you can see it's seen all the changes that we've made. And you can see that it's now ready to then commit that to our repository, which is tracking all the changes. And then we can go ahead and publish that on GitHub so we can upload it to GitHub. So before we touch anything there, let's open this up. Um, let's go ahead and open up Visual Studio Code. You can see that all the files here are now missing. So it's just indicating the fact you can't find any of these files, this red line across the, the names here. So let's go ahead and go to File, Open Folder. And let's open our new folder that we created, our GitHub repository. And that's in, um, in my case, Documents GitHub inside of here. Let's open up that folder. Actually, yeah, this folder here. Uh, so we just want to go to this folder here, not inside the DJ blog router. There we go. So now we have that in place. Let's go ahead and now build a new virtual environment. So in my case, it's going to be Python 3. Um, um, so I'm going to create a new virtual environment here and then just go ahead and activate that. On the Mac here, I'll just type in source, bin, activate. Now, as soon as I've done that, you can see that if we go back to our, our GitHub desktop here, you can see that it's probably picked up, it's picked up this folder as well now. Uh, you can see down here, it's picked up all the files and folders inside of our event folder. So we don't want to commit that to our repository. So we need to create a git ignore file. So go back into your project here and let's go ahead and create a new file here. And it's gonna be a dot full stop and then git ignore. So this file tells git not to update or track changes in particular files or folders. So we can specify here, for example, what files and folders not to track. So for example, we don't want to track the vent folder. That's definitely something we don't want to include. And in addition to that, the database file that we haven't seen yet, but SQLite, we don't want to track that, SQLite 3. And we don't also want to include, remember the, the environment file. Remember I said before that this environment file here, we shouldn't be including that in our source control. That shouldn't be uploaded to GitHub because we want to keep that secure. So we want, to tell Git to ignore this and don't include that in tracking the changes in our project. So that's a good start. We will change that over time. Now, one thing on the Mac that's really not annoying, but something that you might want to include on the Mac, if you go back into your desktop, GitHub desktop, you've got the dot DS underscore store. So if you're running Mac, you want to probably ignore that too. So I've added that onto my list here. So if we go back now, you can see that that has been removed because it was up the top. And in addition to that, we don't have the event now in this list. So that means that we are actually ignoring those files and folders. Of course, I'm just trying to give you a general overview of what's happening here. So what we're going to do is we're going to commit to main. So main is our current branch. So we've created a new repository in our current branch, our current development branch is main and that'll make more sense once we start making more branches but what we're going to do here is we're going to commit to main so what we're doing is essentially we're going to write some code and then we're going to commit so behind the scenes git is taking a snapshot if you like of all the changes that have happened up until that point we then develop some more and then it tracks the changes and then maybe when we're happy we commit that to main and of course because we're tracking all those changes and when we commit it to our, our Git repository, we're tracking all the changes. So we can have a look back at our history of all the changes that we made and so on. So it literally is just a way of tracking all the changes that we made in our application. It gives us a good overview of any changes that we make. We might want to rewind 
and a whole host of other great features, particularly when you're working collaboratively. Um, these type of features are really useful to have. Right, so um, let's go ahead now and make a new commit. So essentially then let's think of a commit as a way of um, making a point of where our application is at, at that point. So we're gonna save like a snapshot of all the code up to that point in our new commit. So we can summarize our commit here. So we could say the changes that we made down here. Um, so I'm just gonna say NC for new changes and we could create a description if there was something specific that we've made updates to. So that keeps us, um, that makes it easy for other people to see what changes we've made on that particular commit that we're trying to commit to our main repository. So let's just go for commit to main. So that's going to mic to commit and now we're ready to publish our repository. So once we've committed, what we can do is we can then upload that back to GitHub. So when we commit, essentially we're just storing that locally at the moment. So no changes are gonna be made to our repository online, but as soon as we press publish repository and we've got the option here to keep the code private or not. So if you don't select code private, anyone can see your repository on github.com. So let's just keep it private and there's nothing else we need to do there. So let's just publish it. So now everything's being uploaded as well as all maybe the history or the Git, um, all the commits that we've made to our application. All that history is being saved now on GitHub. And now we're ready to view on GitHub. So we can select view on GitHub, we just bring it down. And you can see, there we go. Everything's now been uploaded onto our GitHub repository. Of course, you'll notice that it didn't upload any of the files and folders that we asked it not to. And everything else is now stored nicely right here in our repository on GitHub.